Hello and welcome to Heavy Metal Rex. My name is Wace and today I am making a revision video for the Bulge ho uh, hood scoop. And the reason why I'm doing that is, like I mentioned in my last video, there are some people that got some not so great versions of this. Uh, that included weird paint runoffs and some denting here or there. A new thing that's been popping up, and I'll actually uh, put a reference to the Facebook post where I saw this originally, is people have been saying that the vibrations from the hood and the car itself have been shaking the bulge and causing some dents in the paint. Now, after seeing that, I was, <laughs> I was actually out with my family and I ran outside quickly to see maybe if mine was doing it. And of course, I did notice that there were some portions underneath uh, or right next to it where I did see some paint that was missing. So I decided, okay, if that is actually what's happening, is there a way to fix it? And I also wanted to look at the OEM hood scoop underneath it to see how is it that they are going about keeping the hood scoop from bouncing around and causing these kinds of issues. So a couple of different things that we're going to be doing today. So first I'm going to take this off. We'll take a look underneath and see how bad the damage is. We'll compare the bottom of the two hood scoops. And I have a, I don't want to say it's a solution, but it's something that I'm going to try to see if it works. I actually have a lot of foam that I bought to do some cosplay stuff a long time ago, which not, no real consequence to you guys. But I'm going to see if I can cut pieces of that to try and put it underneath and see maybe having that extra cushioning keeps it from vibrating so much. Not really sure how that's gonna work, but it's something that I'm gonna try. So let's first start getting this guy off and see what the damage is. Now, after removing it, I can definitely see some pieces of damage here or there. Um, there's a, another chip over here. I'm going to try to get focus in there. So, you can see by the size of my finger, it's not a fairly large piece. Um, there's a couple more pieces over here. Let me see if I could find the rest. There's one right there. Again, very small. And I think there's more. Yeah, there's another one right there. And I think there's another one here on the inside. Yeah, there's another one right there. So as you can see, yes. Is there damage? Yes. But it is fairly minuscule in nature. Now, I, the person who did mention this online you know, was uh, very adamant to let us know that it was a massive amount of damage. I don't think that this is a massive amount of damage. And considering most of these, I actually couldn't see until I took the hood scoop off. Now, is there a way to prevent that? I don't, I don't really know. Uh, that's a really good question that I'm gonna try to answer today. This may not be something that works. This may not be something that works for me or you guys, but we're gonna, I'm gonna go take a look. Let me show you what it looks like on the bottom of these two. And there, like I said, there is some weather stripping on here that isn't present on that, so let's take a look at that. All right, so let's take a look at these guys. So this is the OEM one. Whoa, well, there's some plugs that are, these are the clips that people were talking about that are actually on the bottom of the OEM that kind of holds it together, but I think I've broken most of them. Those actually, those are the three clips that go in the back. Well, actually one, two, <laughs> and the other ones are broken. But the important part on the back is that there is this little bit of weather stripping. Now, it, <laughs> Is it really that much to keep it from bouncing around? I really don't believe so. It's an incredibly thin piece, probably more for water than anything else. Now, I think these guys are actually what are keeping the, possibly keeping the thing from moving. But to be honest, now that I look at it, it's about even to where the, the, uh, the screw holes are. You know, you got one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. The only thing that's missing is on the top, you only have one, two, three, four, whereas here you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, with three of them being the plastic clips and one, two, three, four being the actual um, nuts that hold that together. I don't really know how you would be able to go about, I guess theoretically you could add a little bit of foam on the edges here, like right here, to keep it from moving, or even a little bit of foam on the back of these, I think. Um, it didn't really move that much when I was looking at it on the 
the actual hood itself, obviously this moved, this moved none at all, but. So let me show you what I think could be a potential solution. I have these pieces of foam. It's funny because I have a black table and everything I have right now is, is black and you can barely see it. Let me see if this, if three, you know what? Now looking at the size of this, I don't even think three is gonna be enough. I think I'm gonna need more. What I was thinking was aligning these and cutting like a little uh, foam edge for it. Yeah, I'm gonna need four. And maybe just putting it on the edge here. I, I don't know if that would work. I could probably reuse it. I don't even know how I would go about doing that. And I have tape as well, double-sided tape, but I don't know if that's really necessary either. Okay, so I, I stood there and I thought about it for a second, and I think I'm going to revise my plan. And here's what I am going to attempt to do. Since it's a little bit harder for me to look at the back of that, of the back of the hood scoop and mold something to the back of that because it's all jacked up, I actually already have this lip right here. So I got this lip right here and lip on the sides and I got this lip right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut pieces of this foam that I have and I'm just gonna put piece by piece by piece on the top, the sides and on the front and then lay the hood scoop on top of that, screw it into that and this should give me a nice cushion for that. That's, this is what I think might be a really good idea. So let me grab a pair of scissors and I can start doing that. So in a nutshell, that's the plan. This is, of course, incredibly rough and really rudimentary. The other thing that I was thinking of, I could theoretically put it here as well on both sides and that would be right underneath uh, where, I don't know how close that would be. That actually would help this area right here, I think, maybe, potentially. Mm. No, it wouldn't. That wouldn't have any impact. It actually would have to be on the sides here. So I have some double-sided tape that I'm gonna stick and just kinda see how it goes. Okay, what I did was actually put just two screws in just to kind of level it out and see what it looks like. I don't see any of my foam. Obviously, I shouldn't. It should be right below it. Um, I won't be able to give you a full assessment of this until I go drive it. And so this is going to turn into a two-parter. Um, I'm going to put in the rest of the screws. And I can kind of feel like a little bit. I can feel the foam underneath there. Now, the purpose of this is for the plastic to sit on the foam and then the foam to be the intermediary between the plastic and the metal. Right now, the plastic is sitting right on the metal, which is what's causing a lot of the, the breaks. Now, this is a temporary solution. If it works, I'll come back and actually, I'll, what I'll probably do is get, see if I can go get actual weather stripping that I can put on the hood itself and then cover it up. Because right now, this was just real quick proof of concept type of stuff. So I've got a couple of errands to run. I'm going to get the rest of the screws on here and go for a drive and uh, I'll get back to you guys tomorrow and let you know exactly how it works. I think this might be okay. Really, the only way I'll know is if I end up with more with more um, scratches, really. That's the only real way. Or if I don't get any scratches in a couple of days, I'd say maybe that's okay. Because I've only had this on here for, I'd say, about a week, two weeks maybe? Not a long time. So anyway, let me finish this up.
it's the next day and I've already driven the car like 60 miles yesterday and I just took it for another drive just for fun. Um, everything seems to be fine. Actually, it even, it even rained yesterday, so I had some extra um, weather issues, uh, but obviously nothing really caused any issues with my, my phone because what I'm thinking about is what I'm noticing is I think the reason why a lot of people are having issues, or even myself, the reason we're gonna have issues is this part of the lip actually sits above the, the hood, whereas the, old, the OEM one doesn't sit above, it sits inside. And so I don't even know if it's possible to save our hoods from any damage. I'm actually gonna take this off and see if any of the foam has indentations in it to see if it actually is sitting on there. I may have just done this for no real reason. I honestly don't even know. I do wanna say, People were asking me if I got the little dimples here. I actually ended up getting two dimples because I screwed uh, screwed the screw in just a little too tight. And when I say like a little bit, I mean I was as generous as I could possibly be. This one, I don't know if you can even tell. It's actually, oh, it's so hard to tell. Like it's there, I can see it. And so I'm gonna back that screw out a little bit just so it's not there. But just something to keep in mind, that is a thing that's gonna happen. So it does look like there are some, I know it's really difficult to see because of all the glare behind me because it's so sunny. It does look like there's some indentation on the back side, not a whole lot on the front. I don't even know, <laughs> to be honest, I don't even know if it's really doing anything. Um, but I think this is the issue. The OEM one sits inside of this, so it doesn't hit the sides. But the aftermarket one has this lip that sits on top of the hood. I don't know if there's a way around it. I think, I think this is just something we're gonna have to live with. Unless they actually put some foam on the outside of the lip, not the inside of the lip. That's the only way I could see this being beneficial or that's a change that they could make. But I mean, if it's, if it's that big of a deal, then maybe this part may not be for you, you know? Cause I, I can see where it's sitting and it's sitting on top of that, but I don't know if I don't know if it's actually going to help. So I may end up just removing it and just leaving it as is and dealing with with it the way that it is. So now, what's the verdict? Uh, as far as like homemade remedies that I've made go, this is probably maybe a little bit of a useless one. I, I did it to try to see if it would even work, but at the end of the day, would I still recommend this? Probably, yeah. I mean. I have gotten more rock chips on this car, on this hood and this bumper, just driving up and down the highway than what that thing has given me. And if it's something that you just 100% can't live with, you know, knowing that there might be potentially some scratches here or there on the side underneath where you really can't see it, then, you know, that's a decision for you. You're not gonna buy it and that's okay. But I personally think that the way that it looks severely outweighs some of the random tiny scratches that I've gotten because I love it. I think it looks incredibly badass. Now, the question about whether or not there's enough airflow for the top mount, I don't know. That's, that's something that I still wanna check out. And I think I'm gonna mess with this one more time by taking the grill out. There is a way, you can potentially take that grill out, but that's gonna be something I will save for a different day. That'll be a different day's DIY. But hopefully this video was informative for those of you guys who are having issues with this. Um, I guess, you know, it's okay. I, I, I want to say, I know not everybody's okay with their scratching their car, but I mean, it was, they're so tiny and they're underneath and like, or in crevices and like, can you really see it? You know, how bad is it really? Like how much of a perfectionist are you? Like, does your car literally never get driven? You know, and then you got to think about something else. I, I didn't even mention this. This is something that, that popped into my mind just today when I was taking a drive. I was actually driving through a commuter lot and you know commuter lots tend to have a lot of lot of like rocks and debris on the floor. You get nice sticky tires. You know how much debris you're throwing up? It's a lot. Like it sounded like I was shaking a box of rocks. Like it's it's ridiculous. So at the at the point of worrying about little nicks over here, there's nicks everywhere on this car right now. We just we just don't talk about it because that's the nature of of owning one of these or owning any car where there is uh, other people and debris. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one. Before you go, if you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. Hitting that subscribe button costs you guys nothing and it gains me everything. Uh, I try to provide as much entertainment and information as possible, whether you're looking at my racing series, vehicular acceleration testing, 
or you're looking at Tuner Talk, which is actually a great series for newcomers and veterans. My only goal is to try to make the VB community better, and I can't do that without your help. Thank you.